Welcome to the eighth installment of the living history of Bill Thompson. I'm Relendra, and I'm interviewing my father, Bill Thompson, about his experiences and memories of the past and of his life. How's it going? Good. <laughs> <laughs> we last left off. You had just decided to join the Navy. Um, mm -hmm. And you had had... Uh, a draft deferment that had come through, but then later uh, you just decided to go ahead and join the Navy anyway. Yeah, well, I, I used the draft deferment for about a year. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that led to a question for me. I was kind of curious what your thoughts were about, about the United States, Russia, we're in the Cold War at the time. What was your attitude about all that kind of stuff? Well. Let me tell you that I was supposed to, I was scheduled to report to OCS, mm -hmm. Office of Candidate School, on a Monday. Yeah. Okay. The Sunday before, and that, that was, by the way, up in uh, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. Newport, Rhode Island. Sunday before, the Cuban Missile Crisis struck. Mm -hmm. And Kennedy was, you know, the Russians were uh, going to Cuba with all these missile, missile parts. Yeah. And... Kennedy uh, spoke to the nation on Sunday and said that they were, we were going to head them off. We were not going to let them have missiles in Cuba. Yeah. And I remember driving, that was on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. and the Monday morning, I had to drive up to report in. And as I came up to Newport, Rhode Island, which is where Officer Candidate School was, all the Navy destroyers were pulling out to sea. Okay. And I said, oh boy, do I have bad timing. <laughs> <laughs> And once she got into OCS, <coughs> we, we were cut off from mm -hmm. all communication for two weeks. So we didn't even know how it all came out. We were waiting to get bombed at any moment. <laughs> yeah. And uh, of course, it was, you know, the Russians turned back. And so, but we didn't find that out till two weeks later. Yeah. So you're pretty much... Two weeks, just uh, no information, not knowing what's going on, and yeah, that's right. And uh, and doing what? Like, what kind of training were you were you receiving? Say that again. What was the training consisting of? Oh, at OCS. Yeah. Oh, it was mostly harassment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, there were there were some classes to take about how to talk to one another when you're at sea, you know, because they have their own lingo and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, you know, basically that's what it was all about, you know, what to expect out of the Navy and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And, but while I was there in OCS, um, uh, what, what was his name? Admiral Ringenberg, was that his name? Remember that name? I can't remember his name. Anyway, he was, a real salty old timer. Okay. And he had started the nuclear Navy. Uh -huh. And they saw I had a background in nuclear engineering from Stanford. Yeah. And so they asked, they, it's, so they, they got all a bunch of us engineers together, all who were in OCS. And yeah. by the way, they were, I think there were 2000 people in OCS or a thousand. Okay. It, it was huge because yeah. everybody, you know, it, it was a crisis time. And um, so uh, I was invited uh, to go to attend this thing. And they said they wanted us to go and interview mm -hmm. Ringenberg in Washington, D.C. to join the nuclear Navy. Well, that's not why I joined the Navy. I joined the Navy to go to go to sea and see some of the world. Right. Right. So the last thing I wanted to do was be a nuclear engineer <laughs> in an office. Yeah. And uh, so. I was uh, really the the admiral was he interviewed me and he was really upset with me. So they they gave me an they gave me orders because I didn't follow the script mm -hmm. to a World War Two destroyer escort. OK. And, and what I was looking for, of course, was a, a more modern ship that would go overseas so I could see some of the world. OK. And so I really you know got I said I got screwed over. Well, I went to, went to a bar where there were a bunch of Navy chiefs mm -hmm. and they got talking to me and they found out what my background was. 
Yeah. And they said, my God, they're sending you to. I said, well, yeah, they got mad at me because I didn't go to the nuclear Navy because I wanted to go to sea and see some of the world. Mm -hmm. Just here's what you do. Okay. These are Navy chiefs. And they told me how to get a hold of the detailer. So I called the detailer and I actually got a hold of him. Mm -hmm. And he said, what on earth are you doing going to a, a World War II DER? And I said, well, I got Rick, Rickenberg got mad at me because I didn't go into the nuclear Navy. Okay. He says, well, we'll see what we can do. But meanwhile, I had to go to the to the ship. Mm -hmm. And oh, what a mess. The captain was totally insane. Okay. <laughs> I mean, just if, if you were going to go out to sea with this guy and you were in battle, the first thing you'd want to do is throw him overboard. So he survived. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I was on there for about, I don't know, three, four weeks, I guess. And I finally got orders. Uh, to, you know, to go to a guided missile ship, which was being built in uh, the shipyard in San Francisco. Uh -huh. So, and at that point, by that point, I had met your mom and we were riding back and forth. Uh, she was in San Diego, but the ship was being built. It was just finishing up the uh, commission in mm -hmm. San Francisco, but it was going to be home ported in San Diego. Okay. So it just worked out perfectly, you know, so. Well, let's uh, let's go through it all in order. Um, I want to head all the way back to just joining officer candidate school. Um, and I was curious about, you know, there it was during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, if you had fear, like you were worried about being bombed, did you have fears about nuclear war? Yeah, yeah, yeah because... Uh... I reported in on Monday and on Sunday is when the destroyers were going out to meet the Russian ships yeah. and they wouldn't tell us anything when we got to OCS for two mm -hmm. weeks, we didn't know what had happened. Uh -huh. And finally they said, yeah, the Russians turned back, you know, when they saw that we were serious. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's something that I, I forgot to bring up talking about your upbringing and everything um, like during the 1950s. Well, this was a time in which there was a lot of fear of, of nuclear war. And the Cold War had started. Yeah. And I was wondering if that had impacted you, if, if like you experienced fears of, of nuclear war or what your thoughts were on that growing up. You know, I, I don't think we thought it was possible because, you know, for the first time, whoever started the war would get nuclear bombed in retaliation. Mm -hmm. So I, we couldn't, I just couldn't imagine anybody doing it. It was mostly just, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, posturing. <laughs> uh -huh. So. And do you remember what your attitude was toward the Cold War? I, I didn't have an attitude. I don't think anybody did. It, yeah. You know, if you think about it, we had been in that kind of a situation uh, for 40 years, <laughs> you know where there was always mean? a threat of a war, you know? Well, uh, for 40 years, I mean, do you, are you thinking like further ahead in time or? This well, I mean, even or before World War II, you know, yeah. it was always tense and, okay. uh, and the Russians were always the bad guys. Okay. So, you know, it wasn't anything new. The only thing new was the, the presence of nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. And then, if you thought about it, you know, why would anyone use it? Because they just get nuclear bombed in retaliation. So, yeah. So. Did you have any thoughts or feelings about patriotism or democracy no. versus communism or any of that kind of stuff? No, by that time I was pretty cynical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what got you so cynical? How did, how did you arrive there? I mean, patriotism was just a, a word they used to fool people into doing things. <laughs> so you were coming in pretty cynical. You were like, I'm going to go into the Navy, but I'm not going. I, I just wanted to join the Navy because I wanted an adventure. Yeah. I wanted to go to different countries. You know, that's yeah. why. Yeah. Okay. So how long was officer candidate school? That was two weeks, you said? or Say that again. How long was your training period to join the Navy? How long was my what? Your training period, OCS. An OCS? Yeah. Uh, well, I got, I went in in October and I got commissioned in March. 
Okay. So that's whatever that was. And then, of course, you know, because I got the Admiral mad at me, my orders in March was to go to the state ER. Right. And, oh, God. And fortunately, I met some Navy chiefs. Right. And when they found out, and they were really pro-Navy. Yeah. And when you had somebody with a nuclear engineering background like I did, they, they, you know, when I met them at a bar, they said, you're the kind of officers we want in the Navy. So they told me how to play the system. And it worked. <laughs> how long did that take? Uh, well, I was in there in October and I got orders in March to a ship. Mm -hmm. To a ship and then then when i got on the ship i i must have been on that ship i, I made one cruise on the ship we were out for two weeks the <laughs> captain was insane um I mean, I mean, at one point it was a small enough ship that we all the officers ate with the captain uh, on yeah. bigger ships the captain dined with the uh with it by himself okay but not not on this ship and Anyway, we're sitting, sit, let's show you how crazy this guy was. Yeah. Uh, the stewards are putting out uh, fruit fruit cups, you know, like a, a before dinner thing. Okay. Well, it turned out that the captain hated fruit cups. Okay. And he wasn't paying attention. He was talking with the executive officer about something. Then he looked around and saw that all these fruit cups were all set in front of the place. And he yanked the tablecloth and threw them all on the floor. <laughs> and I said, oh, my God, we've got an insane captain. Yeah. <laughs> so where was this? Where did you, what What was the ship you were stationed to? And where was it? And It was in San Francisco. So you're in San Francisco. At the Hunter's Point sh Shipyard. Hunter's Point Shipyard, March 1963. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And what about like, so how did you get out there? Did you drive your car out there or like? Well, what did, what did you I do? got talking to, as I told you, these Navy chiefs. And they told me that I needed to get a hold of my detailer mm -hmm. in, back in Washington, D.C. with my background. So I did. I called him. I didn't even know about this. I called him up and he looked at it. He says, oh, my God, what are you doing on a DER? So I said, well, that's why I'm calling you. <laughs> he said, I'll get back to you. OK. And I, it took about two or three weeks and he got back to me he says your orders are coming you're being transferred to a, a brand new uh dlg destroy leader guided missile ship and because you've got i even had a guided missile experience okay so they wanted me on a ship like that you know so what is a destroyer leader guide say again what is a destroyer Le leader guide dlg it was like it was the size of a it was bigger than a destroyer smaller than a cruiser Okay, and uh, they they made a bunch of those at that point, and eventually they converted all of them into into, into cruisers. But that was after I got out of the navy. Okay, and uh, you said it was a guided missile ship, so it had missiles on it. Yes, uh, okay. we, we had what was called Terrier missiles. Mm -hmm. So at the time, the navy had Tartar mi missiles, which were shorter range, and on smaller ships and terrier missiles, which were longer range. So okay. you could get, if you saw an attack coming at you far away, we could launch missiles and uh, intercept them. And I, I was, there was a lot of uh, practice missile shots while I was on that. I've got photos of it, even though it was classified. I so, still have them in my collection. So uh -huh. I'll have to send them to you someday. Yeah. I'd be out there on the bridge of the ship taking a picture just as the missile shot off the- Yeah. The <laughs> sending the microfilm to the Soviets. What's that? Sending the microfilm to the Soviets. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So, what was the mission of this ship? Was it would it just go on patrol? Like, what would it do? You know, like what would you do with the ship? What was it doing? Yeah, like it's there. It's available if there was a conflict. But what does it do in the meantime? Oh, we would head out to sea and, and start looking for Soviet ships and, uh, you Just know, sending missiles at them. <laughs> 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 Who knows? It was all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then you were, uh, what was your rank then on this ship? Uh, when I got on, 
I was an ensign. That's what I was commissioned as. Okay. And while I was on the Halsey, I, be, I made a, a lieutenant junior grade. Mm-hmm. And by the time I got out of the Navy, I was a lieutenant. So it would be like a captain in the Army. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you, so what were your duties? Your ensign on this ship, this well, missile ship? Yeah. <laughs> when I first went on as an ensign, what the hell was my job? I'm not sure I had one. <laughs> okay. And uh, all I remember is that I was in charge of the modal whaleboat which is um, a boat that, you know, if somebody falls overboard, you lower the, the motor whaleboat to go out and pick them up before they drown. Okay. And, and every time we tried to lower the damn thing into the water, it wouldn't start. And the captain would be yelling at me, you know, because I was in charge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and you said the captain was, in your words, crazy. Oh, yeah. He was Anything not else? Uh about him beside the fruit cup story. What were some other things that he did? Well, okay, the food cup story was when I was on the first ship, yeah. the destroyer escort. When I yeah. got on the guided missile ship, we had a different captain. And okay. uh, in fact, we had two of them. And the first one actually really knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he could really, he take over the, the bridge and uh, take what what's called tactical command when we came into port. Mm-hmm. The second guy, then he got transferred off, and we had another guy. His name was Ringenberg, <clears throat> and we called him Ringo. Uh-huh. And we called him Ringo because he was so afraid of getting into an accident. And we, he had twin forty fours, you know, like the guns. <laughs> and okay. He would put forty four RPMs on each each screw, you know, which was like creeping <laughs> at about two miles an hour. <laughs> so we called him Ringo. Twin forty fours. <laughs> I didn't quite follow the twin forty four thing. You said these were revolvers, like yeah, that's the uh, the the uh, RPMs of the screw. Of which and so that's about the slowest you can you can run them at, you know, because the ship is powered by two screws in the back of the ship. Okay. Okay, and it was a steam. It was a steam uh, plant, and the steam went to the uh, to the turbines on the sc- and turned the turbines. Mm-hmm. And so that's how it, how it uh, you know, maneuver through the water. Okay. And so uh, remind me again. So why was he running at, at a low speed? He was afraid of something? Because or? he was afraid of getting into an accident. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'd never want to go to war with a guy like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, I hadn't realized that you had actually been on the, the first boat, the first yeah. ship. Um, the destroyer ex- escort was that one based out of San Francisco as well. Yeah, it was. Well, actually, it was just north of San Francisco. Okay. And but, but fortunately, you know, the Halsey, the one I ended up on, was built in San in the San Francisco Naval Shipyard. Mm-hmm. And by this time, I had met your mom, and we were riding back and forth. And then I found out we were going to go to San Diego. And when we went down to San Diego, uh, finally, you know, I mean, it was a big ceremony, and your mom met the ship and I took her on a tour of it, you know, and I was, had all the fancy uniform on, you know, the, because we were hosting uh, the San Diego neighborhoods, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm curious about once you joined the Navy and you're, when they first sent you to San Francisco, uh, like, what did you do with your possessions, with your car? How did you get to San Francisco? Like, I, I drove, I had a weekend leave. Mm-hmm. And I, and most of the sailors had family in San Diego because we knew the ship was going to be homeported there. So okay. every weekend they uh, they had a bus. The, the ship rented a bus and took it down for people who didn't have the duty mm-hmm. on a Friday, and then they would come back on a on an early Sunday a Monday morning. So I drove my car down, left it with. Uh, your, your mom and her dad's place, you know, they're living at her dad's place. Mm-hmm. And then I took the bus back to the ship on Monday. Well, I meant the, initially, though, like when you first left uh, Rhode Island. Oh, yeah. How did, what did you do then? Like, did you drive to San Francisco? Did yeah, they I drove across there? country. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then what did you, did you have like a place to live like while you were on the ship or like, how did that part work? Well, uh, 
Simonson, Jim Simonson, he was an OCS with me okay. and he had got transferred there too. And yeah. he was there ahead of me. So when I got down there, I'd kept in touch with him. So we rented an apartment, he okay. and I. And so that's, so we had that all set up ahead of time. Okay. But, <laughs> but Simon was a total drunk. <laughs> uh-huh. And he would start drinking at night and, I, you know, we shared an apartment. Sometimes he wouldn't come home all night and okay. he would just be, he was so drunk, he'd be walking the streets, walking like two or three miles trying to find out where we lived. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and like, what about your car? Like, where would you park your car? Like, while well, you'd be out at sea for, for weeks to, or whatever. Well, oh, you could park your car uh, right at the naval base. You okay. know, it was long shoot. we weren't going, we weren't deploying. We mm -hmm. would go out to sea for a week or two. Okay. And, and then so you knew where, where it was. Now, if you deployed for like six months, well, yeah. then you'd have to, you know, get your car, sell it or, or give it to somebody, loan it to somebody. Okay. Because there's no way you could get to it. Okay. And the, so what would your schedule be like? You'd go out to sea for like a week or so. Right. You'd come back. What would you do when you were back? Well, we would do exercises. Some of it would be practice missile shots. Uh -huh. You know, like uh, there would be a ship that would launch a, a, a drone or, or something like that. And then we'd shoot a missile at it to practice. And what, we had three inch 50 guns port and starboard. That's the only guns we had on that ship. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like a normal destroyer where it would have guns up forward and guns in the back. Yeah. So forward and back, all we had was missiles. Uh -huh. But port and starboard at the middle of the ship, we had three inch 50. It was meant for anti-aircraft mm -hmm. guns. And at one point we had a practice where a ship was towing a target and we were at the th using the three inch 50s to sink the target. And we almost hit the ship towing the target. Okay. <laughs> it didn't instill any confidence in us. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So it was March 63. So it would have been not that it would have been pretty soon after starting your deployment or starting your service that that you would have met my mom. Yeah, I, I can't remember. You know, finally I got transferred uh, to the National Security Agency. And right. what had happened was, uh, by this time, because of those Navy chiefs that got me off that first ship, I knew how to play the game. Mm -hmm. So I called up and I said, you know, I've got all of this experience with nuclear power and nuclear weapons. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I've got, you know, a degree in chemical engineering. And they said, well, let me see what I can do. And so I got orders. Uh, and by this time, your mom and I got married and got orders to uh, uh, the East Coast of the National Security Agency. And uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, the reason I got orders there, there was a Navy captain, which is like a colonel in the army. Yeah. Uh, and he saw that I had a background in nuclear engineering. So he yeah. was the one that kind of set it up for me to go there. Mm -hmm. And when I reported in, I went in to see him and he says, what I really want you to do is see if the Russians are, because this is a spy agency, right? Yeah. He says, to see if the Russians are building a nuclear powered airplane. And I said, okay. Why would anyone want to build a nuclear power here? Yeah. <laughs> this guy had no idea what it, what it, he had no idea about nuclear power or anything like that. Okay. So, right when I'm talking to him, all of a sudden the guy who had on he was a civilian had the office next to him came in he because I told him that I had worked you know in reentry and things like that and designing the you know the uh, Avco thing mm -hmm. and this guy came in he said, do you know what a ballistic coefficient is i said yeah you know i work i worked in re-entry for he says would you excuse us a minute five minutes later he comes back he says you're working for me okay <laughs> and we, we were spying on the russian icbm programs you know? yeah <laughs> well i want to get to the nsa but uh, i want to make sure we get all the history and stories of the navy days first say that again I want to go back to 1963 still, when you're still new in the Navy. 
Yeah. And um, so you're stationed up in San Francisco. Yeah. But uh, but then you met my mom down in San Diego. Now, why, why were you in San Diego? Okay, I met, I'm trying to remember how I met her. Uh, I know we corresponded. I, I was down in San Diego to begin with. To begin uh, with. So you were yeah, not- Yeah, but just for a short period of time. I can't remember why. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met your mom there at this bar, Sabatini's. I still remember the name of it. Yeah. And you've heard of your mom's cousin, Helen? Yeah, well, let's start at the beginning, though, because I remember Simo, your yeah. your, uh, your friend that you lived with, who was uh, yeah. a heavy He drinker. and I went to OCS together. Yeah. Now, and he was he... down there with you in San Diego, yeah? Yeah, well, we were at a school in San Diego. That's what it was. I got sent to the school. Okay. And he was there, too, so we roomed together. What was the school for? What's it? What was What was the school for? Uh, to, to get to equate you with, you know, going to sea and what you had to do when you went to sea and all that kind of stuff. Very Navy stuff, you know. Okay. So uh, how long how long did you have to do that? Uh, I want to say it was like eight to ten weeks, something mm -hmm. like that. And that's when I met your mom. Okay. So you're down there for a few months. Do you remember what time of year this would have been? Say again? Do you remember what time of year this would have been? Well, I got commissioned in March. Mm -hmm. So I went to, went to San Diego to begin with. It would have been near the end of March. Okay. So you went to San Diego first before going to yes. San Francisco. Yes. And, and, and you then, and Simo were rooming together. Yeah. And I had met, I'd known him from OCS. And then Simo met Helen. Isn't that how it goes? Yeah. And uh, so he told me to come on down. We were rooming together. We rented an apartment. Right. <clears throat> and I remember he had met them and Helen and your mom decided that they were going to make a dinner for us. And they came up to our apartment with this dinner. And that's when I met your mom. Right. And like Simo, like Helen was very uh, overweight. Simo okay. was overweight? No, Helen. No. Oh, yeah. She was probably 300 pounds. <laughs> yeah. And that was Simo. That's why Simo was attracted to her, if I remember correctly. That was what? Why Simo was attracted to her. You, Simo you was attracted me, to anything that moved. <laughs> you had told me in the past that he had a thing for uh, for fat women. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know whether they, you know, had a relationship or not. You okay. know, I never asked, you know, so. Mm -hmm. But that's how I met your mom anyway. And then your right. mom and I started dating right about that point. Right. If I remember correctly, Simo was like, yeah, I'm really interested in this Helen, but yeah, she has this cousin right, right. Uh, that maybe you'd be interested in her. Yeah. Yep. And so you meet at this bar, the Sabatini's. Sabatini's, right. Okay. And, and Helen always sat at the outer edge of the, to protect your mom, you know. Okay. And, but then when she saw that your mom and I were getting along and it didn't look like I was a Jack the Ripper, <laughs> she she loosened up a little. <laughs> so, what were your first impressions of of your mom? Yeah. Oh well, for one thing, how smart she was, you know, and and you know, I hadn't been hadn't dated anybody, you know, who who knew so much about, her. and she had so many ideas, you know, and she was very creative. Uh -huh. So we just started dating right away. We we'd go to movies that were like what, what they used to call them they were like intellectual movies you know that only the college educated would go to you know? uh -huh. and so she knew where all those movie theaters were and that's where we would go okay and so yeah this would have been so this is spring of 1963 yeah she would have just turned 18 like a few months ago e yeah, I think so. 18 or 19. And if, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And uh, so what was she doing in life at that time? She was trying to go to school. <laughs> mm -hmm. Notice I said trying. Okay. At one point, she started off at San Diego State, mm -hmm. which was quite a ways from downtown San Diego. Mm -hmm. And so she gave up on that because it was such a, she didn't drive. Okay. They had no car. And so then she started going to San Diego 
I forget, San Diego Community College or something, which was right in San Diego. Yeah. And she was going there but when I met her and she was still going there. Mm-hmm. And then we started dating and then she stopped going there okay. because, you know, she wasn't really interested in what they had to offer. Was she working at all? No. Uh, well, a little. Uh, her cousin and his wife, uh, I forget what they did. And they worked for somebody. They made greeting cards or something. And your mom had a part-time job every once in a while, helping them out at busy times of the year. Okay. Uh, and where was she living at the time? With her dad. Uh-huh. Uh, in, uh, in San Diego, you know, and right close to where Simo and I had the, had an apartment. Okay. And yeah, you told this, you mentioned this story where you met up with, uh, you and Simo met Helen and, and my mom, her name's uh, Cinda. And and then afterwards they brought up spaghetti. What was why did they bring up spaghetti? Uh, well, they they figured we didn't know how to cook or anything, so, uh-huh. so they 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 decided. I think it was the way. I think your mom kind of instigated that. that she was interested in meeting me more. Okay, and um, so they decided they would bring dinner to Simo and I. Mm-hmm. And so that very same day that we met them, they came that evening, yeah, and uh, brought dinner, and then. Uh, Helen wanted to wanted a chess set or something, mm-hmm. and I had a car. Simo didn't, yeah. So I rode them down to the mall, and they. But I think it was just an excuse, you know, to get to know us a little bit. Uh-huh. And I think your mom instigated most of it. Okay. So yeah, so you've got a couple months at the school in San Diego. Yeah, the two of you were dating, and you're seeing some movies. And what else are you doing? Well, not much. I was in San Francisco. Uh, fortunately, one of the guys that I got friendly with at OCS was also in San Francisco, and I hung out with him a few times. Mm-hmm. And he lived in a, a really uh, a, a neighborhood where there was a lot of young people our age. Mm-hmm. And I'd sometimes go up there and spend the weekend with him. He had an extra bedroom, mm-hmm. and we'd party and things like that. Not a, not a lot. Nothing ever came of any of it. You know, meanwhile, I was communicating with your mom, you mm-hmm. know, by letter. Yeah. She kept, by the way, and somewhere in my, uh, somewhere in one of these drawers, I've got all the letters. She kept all of them and all the letters she wrote. And they're in here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I, I've i seen them. I've read those uh, or some of them anyway. Yeah, yeah. I remember the two of you. I remember, for instance, you were writing back and forth, talking about the civil rights movement that was going on at the time. Yes, yes. Of 1963. Right. And talking about, yeah, uh, yeah. equal rights for, for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Uh, those types of things. So we, you know, we shared a lot uh, in common with mm-hmm. that. Yeah. And you, you, her dad, of course, he says, this guy you're seeing, he's in the Navy. Because uh-huh. <laughs> his her dad had been in the Navy. You know, he knew right. what that was like. <laughs> so he <laughs> so he he doesn't trust the Navy because he's been there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, he I can't remember when I first met him, but he was surprised, you know. Okay. And and then he approved right away, you know, because she had been at one point dating some of the the um where the hell was she from? Uh, not Puerto Rico. In Portuguese. Portuguese, yeah, the yeah. Portuguese guys. And they were all a bunch of bums and he, he, he would go down with his rifle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So you go back up to San Francisco and start your service on this ship. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, but remember, the ship was going to be home ported in San Diego. It was. So, so I was writing to your mom at that point. And then once we had finished all the work in San, in San Francisco, uh-huh. we went down to San Diego. We, we had a big open house for, for the city. And I was in some fancy uniforms. Your mom came and, mm-hmm. and I showed her around the ship and everything. You know. Okay. Yeah. So how, how long was that? How long were you up in San Francisco before coming down? <sighs> 
you know, I don't remember a, a couple of months for sure, for sure, two or three months, I think. Okay. But I knew when I went to the ship that it was going to be home ported in San Diego. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you exchanged a few letters and then you moved down there and yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Did you room with Simo again? Like once you got back down there or what did you do? Uh, with your living situation? Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and your mom, we didn't live together. Your mom and I, I'm trying to remember, you know, we got married. We, uh, your, your grandfather had gotten married in, uh, right across the border in Arizona, Yuma. And, um, so we wanted to get married. And so he knew the place. Mm -hmm. So he referred us to it. And so we went there on a long weekend. Yeah. <laughs> the funny part is we had no money. So I said, okay, we have money for, I forget what I said, a dinner. And um, there was three things. And I only had enough money for two. So we did stay at a really cheap motel on a wedding night. And we went to dinner and that was all we had. And we borrowed, I think, your grandfather's car, I think. The guy, I can't remember. Yeah. And well, the I guy remember who this actually. The three things were you could have go out for dinner. Yeah. Um, you could stay at the hotel. And the third possibility was to have a wedding ring. That's right. That's right. And so she decided, like, well, we don't need a wedding ring. Let's do the other. And we never had things. One. And then you never got wedding rings. Well, when we got back, the first thing her dad wanted is to see the wedding ring. And yeah. you, your mom quickly spoke up and said, we're not going to have a wedding ring. We don't yeah. need that to remind us we're married. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went like that. I said, I got the right woman here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, we've only got about a minute or two left before we need to wrap up this installment. Um, but I guess uh, there'll be more time to talk about getting married and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I want to just ask more about like life in the Navy and stories from the Navy and that, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, you mean what was going on in the Navy at the time? Yeah, you have some good stories, some good Navy stories and like... Well, yeah. one thing I remember, there was a ship's party and I did, I, I came, I knew your mom would hate that kind of thing. Uh -huh. We were married at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I went by myself and the captain asked the executive officer, where was Mrs. Thompson? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, he's not married. And he uh -huh. said, well, you don't know your officers very well. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I got in trouble over that one. <laughs> right. I remember you saying that you, you felt it wasn't their business if you got married or not. Yeah, I said, my wife didn't join the Navy, I did. Why yeah. she um. <laughs> but they felt like it was their business and yeah. you're keeping things from they them. They felt like it was my obligation to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember, well, I remember you talking about one of the captains, you told one of your crazy captain stories, but you had one that was into NASCAR, the the Indy 500 or something like that. He was what? Into car racing. Remember this one? The captain who was, who liked to listen to the car racing on the radio. Oh yeah, that was, uh, that was the second captain we had. on, uh -huh. on the whole. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. a strange guy <laughs> and uh -huh. he broadcasted it all over on the one MC all over the ship. You know? Right. So for hours, it was the Indianapolis 500 or something. Uh -huh. yeah, so all you heard for hours was. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll need to wrap it up there then for this time. Yeah. But yeah. We'll we'll, next more. time we'll be able to do more, but we, our doctor is opening up a new office and we want to go and see it. So. Okay. Uh, well, we'll pick it okay. up there next time then. Okay. Love you. All right. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.